Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18.com presents Bharat Trailblazers in association with Salesforce, a series of conversations that shine the spotlight on remarkable organizations to showcase their inspirational journey. These are game changers and innovators that have leveraged technology to pivot to growth. And today, the focus is on the ever expanding home finance space. Our focus today is on Avas Finances, a leader in this space. It is engaged in the business of providing housing loans to customers belonging to the low and middle income segments. On the show today, I am in conversation with Mr. Sachin Devinder, Managing Director and CEO of Avas Finances. So welcome to the show. It's great to have you here with us. Thanks, Ruchira. So tell me, you've been a pioneer in this space and of course there are some huge trends that we've been seeing in the space because of various factors like the robust economy, affordability and various other reasons. So could you take us through the broad trends in the affordable housing finance space? Uh, thanks, Ruchira. Uh, see, if you look at overall stack of India on a mortgage to GDP ratio, uh, we are at around 10 percentage. But if you remove the tier one towns and the major cities, it comes to two and a half percentage. Uh, from a perspective of affordable, unserved, underserved, and unbanked, tier three to tier five really represents the Bharat and where the potential actually lies. Mm -hmm. And as we see that growing in the uh, years. I think one of the major macro trends, as I say, is 2.5 percentage of uh, mortgage to GDP. That has a multi-decadal sectoral tailwind really to continue. I think three, four factors really contribute to that. One is the increased retail affluence, which has uh, started in last couple of years, and that grows on. Third is government's uh, impetus on uh, infrastructure, uh, the kind of livelihood uh, opportunities which get created. I think these three, four factors really uh, help us to project the kind of multi digital long runway which is available in the space which we are in. And as Avas, which is one of the pioneers in that space, mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, coming decades would be a long, good, good runway for us. And as you said, of course, uh, you're a pioneer in the space and this uh, market has been growing at a phenomenal rate. So Avas Financer is currently in 13 states with a total of 351 branches. So could you take us through uh, your company's journey till now? How has it really been? Ava started from uh, Rajasthan and Jaipur and that's where we started from our journey. And as we started, we had a contiguous uh, geographic expansion. So in and around the states of what we st uh, were present, we started expanding. So we were there in Gujarat, Maharashtra, uh, Madhya Pradesh, surrounding Delhi. And as when we settled down on those states, we started further expanding to the nearby states. So as we talk, we are in 13 states and we have 350 branches. And the latest additions has been in the southern India, which is Karnataka and certain part of Odisha. All right. So uh, if you could tell us, uh, you work closely with uh, customers who might like, you know, documents like IT return slips or other documents that are needed and thus are often excluded by the larger banks or larger organizations. And you are catering to them to make it more, uh, you know, accessible, make home loans more accessible to them. So how have you created a methodology to assess those customers individually uh, while, you know, facing the constraints that you have to face since they do not have the supporting documents? I think, Ruchira, there are two things which really come across that. As I stated, that we are in unserved, underserved, unbanked. I think these are creditworthy customers, but we do not have the formal documentation which will really be uh, be bankable type or the customers which would be uh, able to service their demands or their loans from the banks. So it goes across into a very high touch kind of a model which goes across identifying and assessing what are their cash flows. So I think in the journey of last 11 years, having underwritten 4 lakh plus of customers, we have come across to a stage and doing that in a self-employed, non-professional uh, segments, right from a grocery shop to a kiriana shop, to a, a barber shop, to a plumber, to a contractor, to a various, various other streams. Uh, we go across and uh, identify what are the kind of income streams uh, which they go. 
get across and populate that and give an assessment of what is the kind of incomes they draw. Based on the incomes, we really go across finding out what is the kind of loan serviceability that can avail. So if the loan, if the requirement of the loan is for the building a house, then, then we have a home loan. If it is for a personal consumption, then it is a loan against property. If he is wanting that for the working capital for his micro MSME, which is a micro small enterprise, then we go across giving a micro MSME loans. Moving on, as a housing company uh, catering to the underserved and undeserved markets, uh, you're deeply invested in technology. So could you tell us what were your initial goals when you began your digital transformation journey? I think two parts which are very important in our journey. As you scale up and you become a pan-India organization, I think it is important that you do it at uh, with sustainability, with reliability and with credit worthiness. And what you want to do is the same thing which you did at one location versus the other. So in that, technology plays a very critical role, an important role really to facilitate in that journey. Okay. So that is the time when we embarked upon this tech transformation journey. So when you really look at the customer, how do you really source the customer in a faster time, in a more predictable time? And how do you really put across in a way that you are more faster in giving him what he wants actually in a much turn better decisioning time. time, the turnaround times which mm -hmm. we talked about. So in that journey, we partnered with Salesforce right. and Deloitte was our implementation partner. So we worked out on the loan origination system, which is a state of art. Why do we pick up? Because it's scalable, it is reliable, it has that kind of bandwidth which we see that at a scale which we want to do, it has that kind of nuances which will help us to really steer that journey. So in that, in that journey, it helps to really navigate much more faster, mm -hmm. being agile, and much more uh, uh, on, on the turnaround times, actually, so to say. Definitely. So you were speaking about loan origination and credit decisioning process. So uh, could you tell us the key benefits of leveraging technology for these two? And if you have any other milestone achievements in this regard that you would like to share with our viewers? So as we speak, Ruchira, we have with the Salesforce, we've crossed 1,40,000 worth of customers, gone through the process, having uh, sanctioned about 5,000 crores worth of loans. I think it gives us a lot of confidence saying that the system is robust, mm -hmm. system is able to scale. What it helps us in three parts, one is the quicker turnaround times. As we speak, our decision making time from login to sanction, when the customer gives in the uh, file to the time I'm able to decision as Avas is reduced by 50%. So that's a big, big uh, decision uh, time. And as we embark on the journey and which where the monetization of LOS would really kick in, is our commitment to going green, going paperless in our digital journey. So all those which are formal documentation or certain documents which are required as a part of the loan documentation process, that is not required in the uh, going future. So that will re reduce our paper usage. It would be seamless. It would be, our, our perspective is that if I have a customer whose property is clear, who is there, uh, having the state of art technology and using that, Am I on the on, on a cup of coffee able to offer him? By the time we complete the coffee, the funds are there in his account. So that is the final vision that we really want to in the segments which we serve. So uh, the modern day customer, of course, is like, you know, uh, very demanding and approaches uh, services through an omni-channel uh, model. So how do you ensure that you are leveraging technology to enhance the end user's experience? How are you really doing that? So as we speak, uh, we have of the 2 lakh plus kind of customers which we have on board, we have 90,000 of the customers using our customer app. Mm -hmm. So I think what has happened interestingly in India post COVID, uh, Bharat is more digitally literate compared to what we see. So the adaptability and uh, uh, understanding of technology is far, far better than what we really you think. Agree. So we are now experimenting with multilingual chatbots, how do you really address the customer needs when he comes on to, we service all the requirements online on the customer service side. We already are in that fray, which is there. And since we are there in self-construction individual homes, we are doing their part disbursements, which is subsequent disbursements also online. The customer goes to the, his house, puts a cross, takes a picture of his property, that is uh, triangulated with uh, the latitude, longitude, he puts in a request and that it flows seamlessly. Okay. So, the kind of digital infrastructure mm -hmm. and aided with the kind of technology which we started using it and the customer awareness and his understanding of technology is really helping us uh, tread that journey in a long period of time. Moving on, how can artificial intelligence really improve credit scoring? 
So I think he, the, uh, artificial intelligence is based on uh, what we've been doing in three formats. One is predictive, second is prescriptive, and third is descriptive. So I think it actually, since we have underwritten 4 lakh plus of customer base, we have the database, we have the customer behavior, we have the property behavior, we have the geographical. Once you run the, uh, the, the models and you have the machine learning which really helps us to predict what is the customer behavior. Mm -hmm. So it is used from a part of uh, sourcing saying that is it a what is the customer go no go kind of a customer based on whatever references we've taken. Secondly, if that is a customer, what is the kind of pricing which I should give on a risk adjusted return kind of pricing, okay. right? And thirdly, from a perspective of customer serviceability, what is that the customer would need in his uh, journey? Mm -hmm. And thirdly is uh, when the time comes across for his repayments, what is the kind of approach he will take when it comes to this? Right. So I think we have a lot of use cases which we have developed. And as we go forward, after the implementation of Salesforce, which happens and the phase two goes live, we will have go and have generative AI, which will really work across and help us in, in, in that long range journey. So as a company, as an institution, which is focused on the segments, which is unserved, underserved, and unbanked, we want to use technology as one of the fulcrum to help customer ease of service, predictability, consistency, and for our own employees and our uh, stakeholders to be much more predictable. So we were speaking about digital transformation. Uh, so how important has Salesforce been for your digital transformation and what are their contributions as a digital transformation partner? So I think as you see, when you scale up, I think what you need technology for is uh, the uh, reliability, the scalability and the trustworthiness of what you do. I think in that journey of loan origination system, Salesforce actually it's a world class, global, and having had the use cases in even in the Indian environment, mm -hmm. uh, it actually gives us that confidence that uh, we will be able to steer that in the in our journey of scaling across uh, as we move across our, our increased customer base, increased uh, AUM, and increased uh, SOH actually, so to say. So one last question before I let you go. Uh, key takeaways from your journey that you would like to share uh, with others who are inspiring to be like you? I think it's very important to tread the road which you have decided with the guardrails which are strong enough, uh, using technology which will help facilitate and take advantage of uh, digital public infrastructure, the Digital India Drive to monetize in the segments where uh, you really want to tread. I think technology is an important parameter, it is an important facilitator in the journey of businesses. And as the new age technologies come in, I think it's important to be adaptable to agile, again with the risks which are in our segments to be uh, very well articulated and to be controlled by technology. All right, thank you so much for sharing your uh, milestones of this inspiring journey and your valuable insights. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Ruchira. It's a pleasure interacting with you. Thank you. Thanks.